my name is Tron Westby. Gunnar Dresler. Balthazar Kivin. Zaspen Halland. And I'm a wildlife photographer from Norway. My name is Gunnar Dresler and I'm a wildlife filmmaker from Germany. I've been using the Cam Shield for most of the last year, but I think in the most important situation it was with the green woodpecker family. I try to film and photograph these animals and while you film and photograph birds, camouflage is really important, if not most important. One thing with birds is also they fly, so you have to get onto their eye level or onto the level of the nest. And gladly I could sit on a cliff in Christiansand and get perfectly on the level to photograph that nest. If you're photographing a situation like this, animals rarely do what we want them to do or we rarely foresee what they want to do or what they're gonna do. Uh, so you have to try for at least a few days to get the photos or the movies that you want and I tried for at least four days. I wanted to have photos that are really decided by the background and how the light is playing in the background. I was mostly filming and photographing that scene in the evening because of the location itself and I wanted the photos to be so that the background is really lighted up and I can change them as much as I want to. And I think I got two photos that worked really out. The first photo you see, the green woodpecker sits on the tree and this photo is cropped. I would have preferred it to directly shoot it in portrait, but it was so fast that I had to take it in landscape. But you see that the background light is really nice and I can edit it to put a specific punch of color in there. And especially that this green yellow background is working with the species is really nice because it's a green woodpecker. Then I have a second photo where I wanted to have the silhouette of the bird on the tree. And optimally, I would have liked to have the sun in the back of the bird so that you just completely see the silhouette as it's intended. But for that you have to move a lot and then you have to consider if moving is that well, you don't want to scare the animals. So sometimes you just have to live with what you get and you have to try over several days. The photo that resulted in my work is not exactly what I wanted, but you see the silhouette of the bird on the tree and I think it works out nicely at least. So it's, it's definitely a rewarding photograph, but enough is never enough, right? But at last, what about the cam shield? I would say it perfectly fits the lens. The camouflage pattern is really good and uh, it gives you some more shock resistance and rain resistance. And for me as a filmer or a filmmaker, it's really important that you have access to manually focusing. And that works really well on this lens as well. Hi, my name is Tron Westby and I'm a wildlife photographer from Norway. And I use the Tragopan products and I've done that I think maybe two, two and a half years ago now and I really, really love them. And I was asked by Espen Hellan uh, to talk to you a little bit about my best experience with using the products from Tragopan. And thinking about it, it's really hard because there are so many. So picking one is really hard, but I think in top of mind, I think that might be the use of the V6 and uh, when I get close to a cuckoo. I really love that bird there and the cuckoo is really shy and 
really hard to come uh, close to. So having a blind is essential. And the V6 blind is really good because it weighs only three kilograms. Uh, so it's really to strap on on the backpack. And it's, therefore it's, uh, I can like take it on a little bit longer hikes. So the V6 for me I use a lot uh, and uh, the, I think maybe the best uh, experience that I had with that blind air was the Coco. Bonjour à tous, moi c'est Balthazar Kevin, je suis photographe passionné en animalier basé en Belgique en région francophone. Pour la petite histoire, cette année, je cherchais à photographier le renardo dans un comportement des plus naturels possibles. J'avais prospecté dans ma région, mais malheureusement sans aucun succès. Donc avec l'aide d'un ami, nous avons cherché dans sa région à lui deux ou trois terriers, parce que c'était une zone où il y avait beaucoup plus de renards. C'était un succès, euh, donc lui-même a placé un peu des pièges pour comprendre, en analyser, pour comprendre le comportement des renardos, voir un peu leurs heures de sortie, leur euh, comportement, et hein, pour savoir placer nos affûts, nos affûts qui étaient des tentes tragopants. Donc voilà, après plusieurs heures d'analyse, nous avons décidé de placer nos tentes. La première sortie a été un grand succès parce qu'à peine 20 minutes avoir après avoir placé la tente, euh, les premiers renardos sont sortis. Malheureusement, ils sont sortis assez loin et cachés par la végétation. Mais voilà, il n'a pas fallu patienter très longtemps pour avoir les, premiers, euh, photos, les premières photos de renardos avec une certaine proximité parce que celui-ci est sorti très vite devant la tente, euh, devant ma tente, donc j'étais à peine à 4 mètres de lui. J'étais même très proche, hein. c'est une, une erreur d'ailleurs euh, que, que j'ai faite, mais par chance la tente était très bien camouflée, notamment par le fait que celles de Tragopan sont très bonnes, mais aussi par la végétation alentour, ce qui a permis à ne pas déranger le renardo et simplement il a fait sa vie euh, autour de moi, devant moi, donc il a mangé, il a dormi, il a joué, Enfin, il a vraiment eu un comportement très naturel lors de cette rencontre. Cette rencontre a duré plus ou moins 35 minutes, ce qui est énorme en animalier. Et franchement, passer 35 minutes comme ça avec un renardo devant qui prête aucune attention à son environnement, c'était vraiment fantastique. L'image que moi qui m'a frappé le plus, que j'ai retenu de toute cette sortie, c'est une image de lui devant moi en, tra en train de se gratter euh, avec une lumière directe sur son, sur son visage qui a vraiment fait ressortir le détail de son poil mais aussi de son regard. Et pour moi, c'était une des photos que j'ai préférées euh, lors de la sortie, malgré qu'il y en a plein d'autres, hein, bien sûr. Mais voilà, ça a été pour moi un, 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 un immense euh, privilège de pouvoir rencontrer ce, ce renardo et de pouvoir le Le matériel utilisé ce jour-là a été une tente Tragopan Oki V3 de couleur automne ainsi qu'une Tragopan V6 aussi aux couleurs automne. Euh, franchement, c'est des, des tentes que j'apprécie fortement, surtout la Oki pour avoir cette position allongée qui permet vraiment de détacher le sujet de l'avant-plan et de l'arrière-plan. Ce jour-là, j'ai shooté justement le Renardo avec un 300 mm 2.8 sur plein format, donc pour vous dire qu'il était très près. Ce que je retiens de cette expérience, c'est toujours bien veiller aux entrées et aux sorties des terriers pour éviter justement d'avoir une trop grande proximité et de faire un dérangement au niveau des petits et surtout des parents qui vont les déplacer. Donc honnêtement, c'est une expérience que je retiens, c'est quelque chose que je ne reproduirai plus lors de mes prochaines sorties au Renardo. 
Je tiens à remercier Tragopan pour cette vidéo, mais aussi pour le matériel de qualité qu'ils nous fournissent et qui me permet de sortir des clichés toujours plus incroyables euh, grâce à ce camouflage qui marche vraiment du tonnerre, que ce soit par les tentes à fût comme par les tenues. Donc voilà, encore un grand merci et moi je vous souhaite une agréable journée. My name is Aspen Halland and I'm a wildlife photographer based in Perthshire, Scotland. One of my highlights of 2021 was to finally use the floating hide from Tragopan which allows you to get into the water with the birds and actually move about while staying camouflaged. It took me a while to find the perfect undisturbed lock, but right away I could see that this is the one I wanted to work on. It had mute swans on it, it had various duck species, it had some coots, some moorhens, and best of all, a little greep. So first off, I attached a ghillie blanket to the hide just to cover it up even better. Then I used the rope to tie the hide to the edge of the lock so the birds could get used to it. It was autumn and the temperature was dropping, so I got a dry suit and I wore plenty of layers underneath just so I could stay warm for the longest amount of time possible while I'm in the lock. I remember the first time getting into the water was quite weird. There was a lot of vegetation growing in this lock. You can't really be squeamish when you're drifting along in the water and something brushes up against your leg. The idea for the floating hide is that you walk slowly at the bottom of the lock so you can move about to find the birds that you're looking for. However, in practice, this can be quite difficult. Sometimes it was really shallow and I was lying with my body straight out behind me and just moving about on my toes. At other times it got so deep that I had to paddle. I remember vividly my first encounter with a coot feeding in the water I just walked up slowly to this coot and it wasn't afraid. To me, this was mind blowing. Usually I lie in a stationary hide and I hope that the bird's going to come close to my hide. But now I could move close to them. I could change my angle depending on what background I wanted, or which angle I wanted the light to come from. This was a game changer. I slowly made my way to my target species, the little grebe, a fluffy little bird that dives under the water to feed on little animals. At one point, I was so close and it was moving about fairly quickly that I really struggled actually to keep him focused on the eye. I didn't want to move my lens and camera about too much because then I might spook it. So using the bird auto tracking, I could keep my camera lens still and I could let the system work for me. And I could continuously focus and it would find the eye of the bird and keep it in focus. I took a lot of images on my couple of outings in the floating hide last year. But one of my favorite is a simple image of a little grebe at first light. It's got water droplets on its feathers from a recent dive that the green vegetation around the lock and the grebe is reflected in the water. I can't wait to go back in the floating hide in 2022.